Yeah, here we go. Oh, here's, oh, this is a really good one. This species is edible. I cannot offer any recipe suggestions, but I'm sure the internet can. Hi, my name is Megan Anderson and I'm an extension field agronomist for Iowa State University and today uh, we're here to talk about an invasive species of uh, woodlands uh, known as garlic mustard. Uh, so this is a, a rosette of garlic mustard that I pulled out of the ground. I didn't get its root system obviously, but it would have a tap root here underneath. Uh, and so garlic mustard is a biennial species that's invasive. What we actually have here is you can see the, the first year growth of the uh, garlic mustard. And so it produces this, uh, we call it a rosette of leaves where a whole bunch of, a uh, number of leaves are actually all coming out of the same spot at the base of the plant. So you can see these leaves are large and they are round. They have a very dark color and uh, this basically deep venation, this netting appearance of the leaves is really common uh, and very noticeable. Uh, it does have a fairly distinct kind of a garlicky smell to it uh, that can maybe help with identification of this plant. Uh, and then basically these plants will look like this all through the first growing season and just produce leaves. This fall they will actually go dormant and then next spring, uh, we actually have a plant of what it would look, a uh, plant from its second year growth where you can actually see uh, uh, those basal rosettes come back and then they actually will bolt uh, these flowering stems from the base of the plant. And this plant is really unique in that the leaves on the flowering stems are a completely different shape than the leaves in the basal rosette. So you can see these are a, a triangular shape. Uh, whereas the leaves of that basil rosette were more of a circular shape. Um, they've, they've got these uh, large teeth along the outer edge. So when it flowers, uh, a lot of mustards have yellow flowers and then there are a handful of mustards that either have uh, white or purple flowers. And this is actually one of the species that will produce white flowers. And each flower has four petals. So that's a characteristic that's very common in the mustard or the Brassicaceae family. And so you could see here, it's actually got all of its seed pods or its salix um, here. So it's ready to dry some seed here as soon as these are mature they're able to open up they actually open on both sides uh, you can see in this example it's basically showing up on sort of the edge of a wooded area where it's getting a little bit more sunlight than maybe it would underneath the canopy of all of these uh, yeah honeysuckles oh there was a bunch of buckthorn back there too <laughs> um, this uh, inv this is a highly invasive species that's really concerning uh, to have in our wooded areas here in Iowa uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, the primary concern with it is that not only will it invade our woodlands, but it, ha it produces what are called allelopathic chemicals. Um, and those allelopathic chemicals can do several things. Uh, so it, fairly commonly, they will reduce the competitiveness of other species around uh, the garlic mustard. And then they can also inhibit the germination of other seeds around it. So essentially allowing this plant to form a monoculture. Um, so this is a really important species to be aware of. And an important species that if we see it, uh, when it's flowering uh, or beginning to bolt in the growing season, we always would advise that uh, for control methods at that time of year, we would try to pull the plants out of the ground and actually remove them from the area to dispose of them. Uh, basically, if we, if we were to pull them and leave them on the ground, there's a fairly good chance that they're still going to be producing seed that would uh, germinate basically later that summer or the following year. So we wanna make sure that we're doing our best job to try to manage this species and keep it out of our woodlands. Should I make pesto with it or how can I use it to cook some delicious meals? 